जय राधा कुंज Gopi Janna Vallabha Kiri Vara Dhaha Hiyaya Hiyaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Kiri Vara Dhaha Hiyaya Yasur Nandan Praja Dhar Handhyanaya Yasur Nandan Praja Dhar Handhyanaya Jammun Thira Vaan Chahiyam Jammun Thira Vaan Chahari Jammun Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hey Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Giri Varadha Giri Adhaya Gopi Janavallabha Gary Varadhari Gary Varadhari Gary Varadhari Vraja Janarandhara Yasodhanandana Prajadhana Handhana Jammun Thira Vana Chahariyam Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabihani Hey, Kunja. Head higher, hot, hum, hot of hot. Kunja be hot here. Poor Premanandi, hurry, hurry, bold, Shiva Prabhupad, Kija. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, Canto 7, Chapter 13, The Behavior of a Perfect Person, Text Number 33. Rajatas charutam satro Swajanal pasu paksitahaya Artibyam kalata swasman Nitya pranarta yavad bayam Rajatas charutam satro 
Rajatascharvatamsatro Swajana Pasupaksitaha Arti Bhyakalata Swasman Nitya Pranartha Vad Bhyam Oh, okay. Ladies, Rajata from the government, Charvata from thieves and rogues, Satro from enemies, Swajanat from relatives, Pasupaksitaha from animals and birds, Artibya from beggars and persons seeking charity. Kalata, from the time factor, Swasmat, as well as from one's own self, Nityam, always, Prana Artavat, for one who has li life or money, Bayam, fear. Hmm. Translation, those who are considered materially powerful and rich are always full of anxieties because of government laws, thieves and rogues, enemies, family members, animals, birds, persons seeking charity, and the inevitable time factor, and even their own selves. Thus they are invariably afraid. <laughs> Purport, the word swasmat means from oneself. Because of attachment for money, the richest person is even afraid of himself. He fears that he may not have locked his money in an unsafe manner or might have committed some mistake. Aside from the government and its income tax and aside from thieves, same thing, even a rich man's own relatives are always thinking of how to take advantage of him and take away his money. Sometimes these relatives are described as Swajanaka Dasu, which means rogues and thieves in the guise of relatives. Therefore, there is no need to accumulate wealth or necess unnecessary endeavor for more and more money. The real business of life is to ask, who am I? 
And to understand oneself, one should understand the position of the living entity in this material world and how to return home back to Godhead. Om Agyan Timidan Dasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Myena Tasmai Shri Gudave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stap Ditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Divadhanta Swami Iti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine, Pancha Kalpa Dhru Vistya Kripa Sindhu Pae Bacha, Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So there's an old saying money is the honey <laughs> but wherever there's honey there's bees <laughs> so there's always some negativity and in this particular case there's much so in this material world the living entity wants to enjoy mm -hmm. the propensity to enjoy is the strongest propensity of the living entity's nature to enjoy because it's actually coming from the soul the soul is by nature um, ananda which means it has unlimited capacity to enjoy but in this material world, that capacity is not available. And enjoyment takes the form of trying to facilitate one's sense gratification as much as possible. <laughs> and that's the material world. To enjoy the senses. And so one facility that allows that is wealth or money. So we find people spend a good part of their day either making money or spending money. <laughs> In fact, that's the major activity of the conditioned souls. They're always thinking how to collect more money and how to use whatever they have for sense gratification, for maintaining their family. These are the activities of the conditioned soul and this is what they focus on. So money becomes something that is considered to be very in, uh, very much wanted by the living entity. And people will do anything sometimes, even kill people, in order to get it. We see here from this verse that those who have money and are considered rich by, we might say, material standards, there's a fear that comes with that. And that fear is uh, a fear of government laws, which are always trying to take away your money, in fact, in today's society, you'll find, and you'll see it, it's happening already, but it'll only increase, and that is the government will look for more and more ways to tax your money. Pretty soon you're working simply for the government, you have nothing for yourself. Yeah. That's their plan, and as Prabhupada has said so many times, it's mentioned in the 12th canto, as the age of Kali increases, People will be so much taxed to death by the governments that they'll leave the cities and go into the forest to live. It'll be so bad. I remember when I was traveling in, I don't know, one European country, I was going from maybe Germany to Spain or something by, by flight. And so I checked in my bags and I, uh, uh, you know, they said, well, you're overweight. So I said, okay. And they said, you, you have to pay uh, an extra fee. And so I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, that's 29 euros more. So I said, fine. And so I wanted to pay. They said, no, you can't pay here. You have to pay at the cashier down. And they pointed to where it was. So I went down there. They gave me a little slip. And I gave it to the lady. I put my 29 euros. I happened to have just the exact amount. 
And she said, no, that is 34. I said, well, the lady told me 29. She said, yes, that's correct, but we charge five euros to process. So I said, I don't really want your processing. <laughs> she didn't like that so much. <laughs> I had a while I wound up paying the extra five euros, so what can you do? So every, even money transactions from, from, from institutions to institutions, they put taxes on these transactions. Just like, you could just like I got a, a parcel coming from, uh, from, your, uh, from London. So since the beginning of the year now, any parcels that come from London into Europe are highly taxed. <laughs> In fact, people are paying thousands of dollars on taxes now, just stuff coming out of London, because now London is no longer in the EU. So I just got two small packages. I mean, not so small, but, and I had to pay 53 euros tax just for, just for those two packages. No, this is the, so they'll always, th the government's always thinking how to take your money. If they don't get it, the thieves will get it. If they don't get it, the relatives will get it. And if you don't, if you are, uh, have a lot of money, the relatives are thinking, hmm, we really hope this guy dies soon because <laughs> we can really get a nice chunk. There was a survey that was done in America because they have this thing called the lottery where you, you gamble and you put some money down and you uh, and this and they choose some number, and if you win, you usually win a large amount of money, like eight million dollars, or sometimes anywhere between five million and ten million dollars you can win. Of course, they tax a large part of that anyway, <laughs> and then you get your large sum, and then you then it said the survey showed that people who won the lottery, the survey was a follow-up to these people's lives, their lives went down, every one of them. Relatives tried to get it, uh, taxes, they used their money for intoxication and all kinds of illicit activity. In other words, there was nothing good about getting it. So a person thinks, well, I won the lottery, but money is, Lakshmi. <laughs> and Lakshmi belongs to Narayan. So just like we see the pastime, we hear how when Ravana stole the goddess of fortune Sita Devi, she is Lakshmi, Mahalakshmi actually. What did he get? He got misfortune. He was wealthy already, but he lost all his fortune and his life because he tried to separate Lakshmi from Narayan. So anyone who uses Lakshmi for their separate from using it in the service of the Lord, aside from what you need to maintain yourself, will find that that money is the cause of problems. So we have this verse from the um, 11th canto, chapter 23. Somebody read. These are the anomalies that come with accumulation of wealth. Someone can read? I can't see it, that's why. You can read, yeah, just read. Yeah. Nice and loud, give them a microphone. So some people think, well, I get money, so it's all, everything about it is good. But this is what the, this is now, this was the Avanti Brahman, very wealthy, he lost everything. And after he lost everything, this verse explains what money was to him before. Uh -huh. uh, Tift violence. Yeah, go ahead, just put it up and yes. speak. Tift violence, speaking lies, duplicity, lust, anger, perplexity, pride, quarreling, enmity, faithlessness, envy, and the danger caused by woman. Gambling and intoxication are the 15 undesirable qualities that are contaminated men because of the greed of wealth. Although these qualities are 
undesirable, men falsely ascribe value of them. One desiring to achieve the real benefit of life should therefore remain aloof from undesirable material world. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, this is the example of the Avanti Brahmin. He had everything. He was very wealthy. Somehow his fate changes. He lost everything. And after that, his relatives rejected him. His friends didn't, nobody liked him anyway, because not only was he wealthy, but he was quite cruel. So it's mentioned that sometimes, not sometimes, it happens all the time, that if a person develops friends, and that person's wealthy, these friends are more friends of their, his wealth more than, more than him. Because <laughs> they, they seek friendship with wealthy people in order to get something from that such as beggars, as it's mentioned here in this verse, beggars and people seeking charity, like that. And people who have wealth, have a lot of wealth, it becomes like an addiction. What happens? The addiction, they want more. Nobody is, those who are wealthy are never satisfied with the amount of wealth they have. Because wealth brings that, that you have to get more and you have to plan how to get more. And so there's always this competition to, for exploitation of even the resources of the earth, resor exploiting other people, making plans to get more and more money. And those who are wealthy are usually a little bit materially intelligent. So we have our example of our, one of our former presidents, <laughs> the most recent former president, in the United States, super wealthy before he became president. But it was found out later that he was very expert at avoiding taxes. <laughs> because he had, he, he knew how, because he was very intelligent and he had so many plans. And so he was able to avoid a lot of the taxes that the government was imposing on his wealth. And someone called him out on that in public and he said, that just shows how intelligent I am. <laughs> because he was a, what we say, a good cheater, he, he was considered, he considered himself successful. <laughs> so this would, yeah, so therefore lying comes with wealth. Cheating, so many, you see, 50, these are 15 bad qualities that follow accumulation of wealth. Now, for one in devotional service, it's a lot, it's a little different. It says that it says in the first canto, second chapter, verse number sixteen, I believe it is, that um, this is in the purport. If you want to go, you want to do, you can go for that. It's just a small statement. I'll just make this statement. It says that. For those who are seriously executing devotional service, those who are on the path of devotional service, there are two stumbling blocks. And this is very important for devotees to understand. Attachment to the opposite sex, attachment to wealth. So when you make advancement in Krishna consciousness, and you keep this in mind, as you make advancement, you get more facility for both of these things. Krishna will give you more wealth and Krishna will, gi will give you followers in the form of ladies. Or, for the ladies, it's the opposite, like that. And these things are there for Krishna's gifts, so you use them in Krishna consciousness. But, if you become attached to them, Ranga Tarangini, attachment to the benefits of Krishna consciousness rather than to the purification of the heart, you fall down. So in that verse, in the second chapter of the uh, second, yeah, first canto, it says that many stalwart devotees have fallen victim of these two things and given up the path of spiritual life. Hmm. So these are the two strongest obstacles in devotional service. Attachment to wealth or becoming attached to wealth as wealth comes and ladies, the opposite sex, like that. 
So, um, and you'll find as you make advancement, these things become more prominent. <laughs> it's a fact. And therefore, you have to be very aware that everything belongs to Krishna. <laughs> this is the point. And that Lakshmi, in the form of wealth, belongs to Krishna to be used in his service. And as people come to you, you develop followers, as Lord Chaitanya says, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam Vaja Gadisha Kamaye. As you develop, Lord Chaitanya says, I don't want followers. I don't want wealth. I don't want the pleasure of the opposite sex. I don't want to be, be known as a great devotee of the Lord. I simply want your devotional service, life after life. And so he's giving the formula that these things, for those who are in knowledge, because it's happened to so many devotees in our society, so many, they make a lot of advancement. And then what happens? They get attached to money and they get attached to ladies. Usually the ladies are the disciples, <laughs> many cases. Or people who come by way of preaching. That's another form. So these things will be there and it's Maya testing you. It's Maya testing you. And if you can see that this is simply an opportunity to increase my service, by engaging these things in Krishna's service. And we see, I mean, Prabhupada said that, to, he said to the grihastas in our society, if you want money, go to the sannyasis. They <laughs> Yeah, he said that. <laughs> sannyasis are not supposed to keep money. They supposed, They can use money. They can manage it, but they're not supposed to keep it, and they live simply. You see, Prabhupada, although he had and he had millions of dollars at his disposal, he simply dressed the same way. Someone gave him a Rolex watch one time. He wore it for a little while, and then he gave it away. <laughs> Prabhupada was never so much interested in getting, and of course he always said that one should give the best to the spiritual master because the spiritual master is the representative of the Lord. But at the same time, that representative of the Lord, the spiritual master, sees that this is simply an opportunity to serve Krishna like that. So Prabhupada said, you know, as money comes in, money should go out. <laughs> Using it to spread Krishna consciousness, making plans. In other words, it's finding ways to use it in devotional service like that. And take what you need. For grihastas, they have to earn some living, living livelihood in order to facilitate their needs. But if we get too much into making money, that money becomes a source of, as it says here, so many problems. And then people become fearful. And that's the point. Fear will come with accumulation of wealth. Because even if you have a lot of wealth and you accumulate it, you're, not gonna, you're afraid the government's going to take it away. It's going to be stolen somehow. Uh, or thieves are going to... Somehow, something like that. So that anxiety comes, as it says here, anxiety also comes with accumulation of wealth. So devotees, and those who are, in, who are in a position to handle wealth regularly should always be aware that it belongs to Krishna. Krishna is Bhagavad. And one of his opulences, he's full in all wealth. He can give you the whole world. I mean, if he wants to, if he knows you'll use it in, in his service, he will. But he'll give according to how best you can use it. And if you accumulate more, which happens a lot of times, then it can be a stumbling block in Krishna consciousness. Because with money comes women. Women follow money. It's two things. You can't separate these two things. Wealth and ladies. They come together. It's like... Two things that are one, 
and purpose, you know, like that. So, of course, one should, if one, one is married, that's fine. But if one is in the brahmachari ashram, which I find most of you here are, be careful because these things, if they come, learn how to use them in devotional service. <clears throat> and they will come. There's no question about that. As you make advancement, you will get more facility f for wealth and for the association of the opposite sex. So be very diligent to understand everything belongs to Krishna. And to use it in his Krishna in his service means to be successful in our Krishna consciousness. Jai Sri Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Now this is an interesting purport here. And it also says that one is afraid of oneself here because of too much money. You see, to nowadays, there are so many people that are so so rich, they don't even know how much money they have. Yeah, they don't. There was one very wealthy person, I won't mention any names, last year he made $27 billion more just in the coronavirus program. Yeah. <laughs> this coronavirus is a big money adventure for the pharmaceutical businesses. They're, they're all dancing in ecstasy, all those people who have stocks and pharmaceuticals. <laughs> the stocks are going up. Yeah, so then, yeah, because, you know, they, they capitalize on everything, even on people's suffering. So that's how society goes. And if you're, if you're making money because you're causing suffering to others, or you're facilitating another person's suffering, your money will simply be a source of suffering for you also. And it's, it's proven, too. The statistics show that those who are the wealthiest are the most depressed. Those who are the wealth, mo wealthiest are the most suicidal. Those who are the wealthiest are the most anxiety. People who are poor don't commit as much suicide as people who are wealthy. Really, that should, that's a statistic coming out of the World Health Organization out of the United States. So, and especially young people who are born in wealthy families, this happens. There was one, uh, one very, very rich family in India, and uh, their son, he grew up in that atmosphere, and he had everything, obviously. And also loving parents, too. Not only were they wealthy, but they were very good parents, too. But at one point in his life, he committed suicide, the boy. The parents were shocked. So shocked that they, they went around the world meeting various types of sadhus, wanting to understand, because they, they were also very pious, the family. Why did our son commit suicide? He had everything loving family, everything. Why? Finally, they came to Iskod. <laughs> and one of our leading devotees was Radhanath Maharaj. He spoke to them. <laughs> he spoke to them because he knew them. He knew the family also. So, yeah, and then he was explaining to them just how, you know, wealth is not necessarily a source of happiness. Because that's what people think, that the more, the more money you have, the more happiness you have. But it's actually the opposite. Therefore, in the scriptures it said, one ishavasya madam sarvam yat kinchatam tetam chagat tena chaktena bunjitaha magridaha kasasvedaram. One should take what they need to keep body and soul together, live nicely. If you have extra, you can put it in a bank and use it for emergencies. For those who are grihastas, 25% of their income can be saved for emergencies. And 20 and 25% of your income can be used to live. And 50% can be given to Hare Krishna. <laughs> Temple presidents like these lectures. <laughs> But actually, that, that, is, that is Rupa Goswami's formula. <laughs> yeah, 
Rupa Goswami is for me. We have the story of Srila Sanatan Goswami. When uh, Sanatan Goswami refused to follow the uh, Islamic government, which he was an employee of, the, the Nawab put him in jail. And so he was in jail, but he wanted to get out. So Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami had collected a lot of gold coins during their time working for the government. So Rupa Goswami had retired with a large amount of money. So Rupa Goswami, he had that. He had some of the money. He had given other monies for propagating spiritual practices. So a letter was sent by Sanatana Goswami to Rupa Goswami. Send me 10,000 gold coins. I want to get out. So he sent it. And uh, it was able, he was able to get to Sanatan Goswami. Now, Sanatan Goswami was still locked up, but he had the, the money. So he had a jailer who was taking care of him. He would lock him in chains and keep him there. And so he offered the jailer, who was a Muslim, uh, first of them, he, he, he uh, started to praise him for all his good qualities. And the jailer was feeling very happy like that. And he uh, said, well, if you release me, I'll give you 5,000 gold coins. So the jailer was a little afraid because he said, don't worry. Then he said, well, actually, I'll give you almost 10,000 gold coins. And all you have to do is tell them that when you went to take me to the banks of the river so I could take care of my bodily needs, I jumped in the river with my chains on and I drowned. That's all you have to tell them. So the jailer was, became greedy and took the money. Now there was, uh, Sanatan Gohaswami had eight gold coins left, that's all. Now he was free. Somehow he met one servant named Ishan, so they were traveling. When they came near this one kingdom where there was one rich uh, storekeeper, he used to consult astrologers to see, and he was the head of the Dacoids, to see who was coming through his kingdom, and then he would rob them and kill them sometimes. So, uh, no, he was a hotel keeper. That's right, yeah, he was a hotel keeper. So Sanatana Goswami went to that hotel to stay overnight. And he could understand that this, this hotel keeper wants to kill him and take these eight gold coins. So he went to the, 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 the hotel keeper. He said, actually, I have this money. I'm carrying it, and I want to give it to you. Oh, you want to give it to me? Yes. Well, actually, you know, thank you, because I was planning to do some harm to you and get that money. But since you are giving it to me, and I can see you are a very saintly person, I can't take it. You keep it. Sanatana Goswami said, if you don't take it from me, someone else will try to get it. <laughs> So you take it. So he gave him. Now the money was kept with the servant, Ishan. And she, Ishan gave the, the hotel keeper seven gold coins. He kept one. He kept one. So Sanatana Goswami he said, now uh, I do have one favor from the, you know, get me through this kingdom because this area, and there's a lot of Dacoits. And so he said, well, yeah, we'll make all arrangements to make sure you get safely through. So he helped him. And he was traveling. He was on his way to meet Lord Chaitanya in Benares. And, uh, but then he understood that, Sana that Ishana had one gold coin left. He said, Ishan, you have that one gold coin? Yes. He said, this is a death knell. So you take that gold coin and you go. 
and I will travel alone. So he used the money that he got from Rupa Goswami simply to get free so he could go to Lord Chaitanya. But he wasn't interested in keeping any of the money for himself, although he had worked for the government and he got all the, because he knows that thieves will take it away, government taxes will take it away, or it will simply become a source of anxiety. And finally, of course, he, he, he made it to Lord Chaitanya. But Prabhupada writes in that, that those in the Grihastha life should follow the example of Srila Rupa Goswami and give 50% of the income that you make, 50% of the income after your expenses are taken care of. No, not, not really, that's wrong. 50% <laughs> of your income should go to propagating religious principles. 25% you can live on and 25% you put in the bank for emergencies like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, how many of us follow that system? <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess maybe some devotees do. But it's very strong. I know in uh, Christianity they call it tithings. Tithings. Tithings means you give a percentage of your income to the church like that. Like that. Because everything belongs to to the Lord anyway, so we can use what we have in Krishna's service, but we should know that accumulation does cause problems, anxiety, like that. So, like that. So uh, money is Lakshmi, and Lakshmi is meant to be used in the service. Now today you don't find real wealth because real wealth is precious metals. Gold, silver, platinum, and there's other rubies, and of course, jewelry. This is wealth. But now they made this paper stuff, and they, they call it wealth, right? But it's not real wealth because it doesn't really represent anything. It's all it does is represent that the government says, if you have this paper, you have, you have spending power. But if the government says, well, your paper's no good anymore, and you take it and stuff it in your pillow, and you can have a bigger fat pillow to sleep on. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so, your, this paper money is not really wealth. And Prabhupada gives a whole long discourse it's a morning walk conversation with his devotees. They're talking about it in discussion about this paper wealth. He said, you work hard and they give you a piece of paper. That's all. And it has, you know, what is the value of the paper? The government says it has some value. But you'll see when the government changes according to the stocks and everything, the money devaluates or revaluates like that. So the money is always changing. Just like 20 years ago, if you had 10 rupees, it's much was worth much more then than it is now. So the devaluation of paper money is continuing like that. And soon they will get rid of paper money altogether. <laughs> That's their plan is to have you have digital money that um, you, you have a number in your bank account and every time you make a transaction the number goes down or up and you have no nothing tangible in your hand anymore that's the future that's what they're shooting for <laughs> worldwide <laughs> so yeah so the, the, you'll see how those who have wealth they want more and those who will have a little bit, they also want more. Wealth has this disease of wanting to get more and more and more. So Prabhupada said, there was one uh, yogi, yogi, and he would, his name was Ramakrishna, and someone would give him money, he would say, oh, no, no, money, can't touch it. And it's dirty. Prabhupada said, you give me money, come on. <laughs> And I'll take it, and I'll use it for Krishna. 
In that way, that money has its real value. Prabhupada tells the story of <clears throat> three types of consciousness. Um, somebody drops a, you know, some money on the ground. So one somebody comes along and says, oh, somebody lost money. It's not mine. I better not touch it. So he goes on. So the second person comes along, sees the money and says, oh, money. So he picks it up and takes it. And then, of course, the third person, a, per, a third person would, well, let me, the third person is, should be the second person. The second, but the point is that the third person, he sees the money on the ground and he says, oh, that money must belong to someone. Let me find out the owner. So he picks it and God tries to find who it belongs to. So the first one is not very intelligent. The second one is a thief and the third one is has the right mentality. <laughs> so everything belongs to the Lord. And we're allowed to use what he gives us. And he, the devotees always have whatever they need. Devotees are never in need. Unless you live beyond your means, then you'll find yourself in need. And Krishna always takes care of his devotees. And then devotees know that Krishna will always give if we use whatever there was one devotee. He was really very wealthy. He came to Krishna conscious, joined, got initiated. He stayed in the, his business, and his business increased eight times after he became a devotee. And he kept using his money for different projects, and he was giving, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for projects, rupees. He was from India, actually. He was giving large quantities of rupees to support and like that. So, and money can be used to help others. So it's a form of service. We, sometimes we find that there is some need. Someone has an operation and they don't have enough money. You give some money. So you're doing a service, a great service to someone. So one should look for opportunities to use Krishna's wealth in the service of the devotees and the service of the projects in ISKCON like that, and you'll always, you'll never be poor. <laughs> Unless you have really, really, really bad way of, met. just like there was one devotee, his name was uh, Vasudev Datta Thakur. We heard about him, how much he loved every living entity. He wanted to allow every living entity to give. He said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you give them all my Give, them, give me all their sinful activities, I'll go to hell and they can all be liberated. And that was Vasudev Datta Thakur. Lord Chaitanya used to say, oh, Vasudev, you know, my body belongs to you. You have purchased me. And by his devotion, the Lord was so happy about Vasudev because he was willing to suffer for the benefit of others. But one thing about Vasudev Dante Thakur, he couldn't manage money. He had some money, but he didn't know how to manage it. So he would always use his money in the wrong way. <laughs> At least that's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu assigned another devotee to manage money for Vasudev Dante Thakur. <laughs> so he could use, spend his money in the right way. Because he would just give it away. <laughs> I remember there was one... This happened before I was a devotee. I remember there was one young man, his parents were super rich, and both of them died, and they left the entire fortune to him. And this man, he would go on the street corner with $100 bills, and he would just give it to people. <laughs> oh, here, he gives him, he could give him money away. <laughs> After a while, you didn't see him around anymore because there's certain people didn't like what he was doing. <laughs> but he was just thinking, "Why well, I got all this money. Yeah. He became popular. He was on television. They were interviewing him and everything. He was just giving, you know, he had so much wealth. And he wanted to give it and share it to others. But his good 
intentions were not appreciated by others. And he was just giving it. Sometimes he would see a poor person, because in America we have a lot of homeless. I don't know if you, you don't have homeless here, do, do you? A few. But in, in, in Western countries, especially in warm climates, there's like hundreds of people who are homeless. Therefore, we have these, what they call food centers, where they come every day and get free food. They call them food shelters, homeless shelters, like that. And so, yeah, he was just giving money to poor people, but they didn't like that, so they stopped him. <laughs> so, yeah, so money, um, if we use it for the service of the Lord, it'll always be a source of advancement in your spiritual life like that. And take what you need like that. Okay. Any questions, comments about Lakshmi Devi? Yes. To share, uh, to share uh, about, uh, I saw f one film about a man who accumulated more and more uh, money and uh, don't spend money for himself, uh, only to have money and count money and be uh, very uh, fear. He had, uh, has had fear, uh, only look not to take uh, uh, his money and uh, one day uh, the same he uh, he went to count uh, the money and all lock and all uh, to be uh, to be uh, secret and uh, when uh, he once he returned and uh, saw something uh, he uh, he had heart attack this was uh, the coat hanging uh, the the shadow of co uh, coat hanging. Uh, a shadow of a, shadow. Co a coat. Shadow. He put uh, his coat hang mm -hmm. uh, and then. Uh, he saw then the shadow and he and got afraid uh, and he died. Uh, yeah, and he got hurt. He was afraid somebody was coming to take his yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very well. Welcome to the reality. <laughs> There's one story where one man. He come. He he finds this big, big, big lump of gold. He thinks, "Oh wow, gold! I'm rich. Now what to do with it?" So he goes into the forest secretly, and he digs a big hole in the far in the ground, puts it in the ground, and covers it up. And then he leaves. And then the next day, he, he goes back. He digs up the hole, looks at the gold, and thinks, "Oh, how rich I am." And then he puts it back, and he's doing this every day. He's just going and looking, going back. So finally, one man starts to follow him and realizes he's got some gold. So he hides, and then he, he doesn't, well, he realizes this man is doing something secret. So he sees, oh, he's got gold. So when he comes, sees his gold, puts it back, he, uh, the man takes the gold and puts a big rock in its place. Just an ordinary rock, same size. So uh, the man comes the next day and he looks, oh, someone stole my gold, someone stole my, and he's in so much anxiety. And, uh, and he sees there's just a big rock there and he doesn't know what to do, so he's, Finally, he meets one sadhu, and he tells the sadhu about what happened. The sadhu said, what's the, what's the problem? You go every day to the forest, you dig it up, you look at the rock, you put it back, and then you go. <laughs> yeah, you, that's all you were doing anyway, so you. <laughs> you didn't know the value. <laughs> Thank you for that story. It reminded me of that. Come on, I know you guys want to ask questions. <laughs> Some questions. 
Money is an interesting topic, so if you're not asking questions, you're hiding something. Come on. <laughs> I'm not leaving till you ask a question. <laughs> no breakfast today. <laughs> Intimidation coming from the Swami. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> That's why you're always smiling. <laughs> yeah. The real wealth is the the holy name. If you have the holy name, you got you got all the wealth you need because you have Krishna, and Krishna has a lot of money. <laughs> Good. So you won't have to worry about women either, because they don't they don't like they don't they don't like people without money. <laughs> I was just talking to one devotee. He was telling me, you know, I had a girlfriend, she left me because I didn't have enough money. So now I have another one and I don't have any money and she's gonna leave me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just talking to him about a week ago. <laughs> he was telling me all this. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to worry about ladies then. You just tell them you're broke. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got more money. You should look at him, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't take any of your money if you ask a question, please. <laughs> no questions? Okay. You guys outnumbered me, so I can't, what can I? <laughs> I can't do anything. It's a good discussion because really it's the foundation for <clears throat> material life and it's the very, it's one of the biggest causes of fall downs in spiritual life is uh, accumulation of money. Okay, thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Prabhupada used to say, my money is my money and your money is my money. <laughs> Everything belongs to the guru. Because <laughs> he gives it all to Krishna anyway. That's what Prabhupada was saying. <laughs> You give it to me, I give it to Krishna, that's all. <laughs> okay. But if you can free yourself from attachment to women and money, or the opposite sex, then your path to Krishna consciousness is free from anxiety and difficulties. These are the two biggest stumbling blocks in the path of, and that's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, in that verse 1 to, one to 16, I think it is, or 17. Srinvata svakata krishna purnya shravana kirtanaha riddanto ya badrani vidnunoti srihit satam. Prabhupada makes it in the purport in that verse that so many great souls have fallen from the path because of the one of these one or both of these two things mm -hmm. because that's that's what material enjoyment is about women and money <laughs> yeah okay but prashadam is much better than that <laughs> Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.